So, by the show of hands, how many of us in here are at least 20 years of age or older? Okay, pretty much, pretty much everyone. Um, it probably won't be shocking um, when I tell you that the average life expectancy in the United States is 80 years of age. However, when we put that into perspective, um, as 20 year olds, that means we've already lived one fourth of our entire life. Just like that, gone. <laughs> Um, however, what if I was to also tell you that there is a miracle drug out there that we could take that could potentially extend our life to not just 80 years, but 120 years? You know, would you guys take it? I think many of us would. Um, and that drug, it sounds science fiction-y, it sounds like it's made up, but it's actually uh, already in existence. It's uh, called rapamycin. And uh, this drug has been known to increase the lifespan of various organisms throughout the um, evolutionary spectrum. So things like yeast, uh, mice, um, fruit flies, worms, non-primate non -primate humans, and also even dogs. Um, it has shown to uh, increase the lifespan. So unfortunately, there's not enough data yet on human trials, which is uh, something that we need funding and something that we need to get going, that way we could uh, see if it'll increase the lifespan in humans as well. Um, but what is rapamycin and how does it work? Um, well, to first understand that, we need to look at the mTOR complex, because what it does is um, rapamycin will bind to this mTOR complex and then uh, inhibit uh, the mTOR complex and all that it does. So when we think of the mTOR complex, it's mostly, uh, its main role is protein synthesis. So anything that has to do with getting bigger, stronger, uh, things like that's gonna uh, be associated with mTOR. So things like uh, MR, mRNA translation, which you know, directly correlates to uh, protein synthesis, uh, the making of new lipids, aerobic glycolysis, and even uh, the making of nucleic acids. All are essential for cell life, all are essential for uh, building, building blocks. Um, so with that being said, the mTOR, it's actually stimulated by several things such as glucose, insulin, and amino acid detection, which kind of makes sense because you know when we eat, uh, that's usually when we get the nutrition to you know, build muscle to get bigger and stronger. Um, but other things too can activate it, like infectious agents. So like when we get sick or injured, um, that stimulates mTOR to make proteins to combat the, uh, the infection. Um, so when so when wrap up binds to this, it'll inhibit this and it'll pretty much inhibit everything else while simultaneously activating autophagy. Now at this point I know what probably some of you are thinking. You know, um, protein synthesis, you know, getting bigger and stronger, that's good, right? While autophagy, it's catabolic, it you know degrades cells, that's know that. So how does this actually extend you know someone's life? Um, and it's important to know that although rapamycin um, inhibits mTOR, it's not necessarily an on and off switch. It's mostly uh, helps to deregulate some of the expression. So it doesn't turn off these completely. Um, so and I think that's where the real magic is in extending the life. Uh, because you still have protein building, but the real trigger here is uh, the initiation of autophagy. Um, and it makes sense, right? Um, if we go back to uh, Nils' uh, presentation a few weeks ago, he had mentioned uh, the Blue Zones, which is um, uh, uh, this community of people that are living 90, 100 years old. Um, and although they're all over the world, some of the things that they have in common is you know, 90 to 95% of their diets are plant-based. And they also do some sort of uh, um, caloric restriction, so through intermittent fasting. So if we look back at the diagram, if plant-based diet, it's gonna, you know, decrease the glucose, decrease the insulin sensitivity, and also decrease the amino acid detection. And caloric restriction, along with uh, intermittent fasting, is gonna stimulate autophagy. So, we see a correlation here with the 
people that are outliving everyone, and then rapamycin and how it affects the mTOR complex. So, um, I mean, the evidence is clear that rapamycin can help um, in uh, increasing lifespan in humans, but more funding is needed to actually make those, uh, make those claims. Um, and just because rapamycin can increase the lifespan in humans, um, there's still a limit of how old we could actually get. Um, and that has to do with uh, telomere attrition, which is the, uh, the next part of our presentation. So why is telomere attrition relevant to aging? And what even are telomeres? Well, just to back up, as George just pointed out, rapamycin has shown to have effects on multiple ones, multiple of uh, the hallmarks of aging. And why telomere attrition is so important when looking at the hallmarks of aging is that it is a primary hallmark of aging. But first let me explain to you what telomeres are. Some of you might be familiar with the cell cycle and DNA replication. And during DNA replication, the DNA polymerase adds nucleotide pairs to the primer. After, after that process is done, the primer is removed. And what happens is that on the lagging strand of the DNA, there happens to be a gap which cannot be filled. Essentially, this means that with every divide, your genome gets shorter. And it gets shorter and shorter and shorter. That's very problematic because Eventually, you'll lose some important genetic information which will lead to cell senescence and even apoptosis. So, the body came up with a way to counteract these pernicious effects at ways to be telling this. And essentially what it does is it adds a bunch of junk at the end of your DNA, repeating TTA GGGs. And that information means nothing, but it allows that gap to remove nucleotides that are actually not relevant to your, um, to your genome. I like to think about telomeres as kind of a margin. If you mess up your margin for a printed document, you might end up with something that looks like this, where the printer cuts through the line of important information. However, with the right margins, you end up with the wanted document with all of its information and its integrity. Now, telomeres themselves shorten with each divide. And you can think of this as a candle, slowly burning away. And so, the problem arises once again. How do you counteract that? Well, the body enacts an enzyme complex known as telomerase. And telomerase works by adding base pairs at the end of DNA. Just to back up, the telomere attrition is very, very well researched and has shown to be associated with aging. In fact, newborn babies have as many as 8,000 base pairs of telomeres. Adults have 3,000 and elderly people have 1,500. Research has shown that elderly people over 60 with shorter telomeres are eight times as likely to die from infectious disease and three times as likely to die from heart disease. All this information points to the fact that telomere attrition might hold the key to unlocking a longer chronological age and a longer physiological age. Now, to go back to telomerase, it is activated by two genes, the TERP gene and the TERP gene. And those genes both contribute different components of telomerase. Together, they allow telomerase to, as I said, replenish the telomeres. Now, it's not all clear, though, because TERD activity has been shown to be present in 90% of main cancers. Essentially, why am I talking about cancer? Well, the problem with telomerase is that it allows for uncontrolled proliferation. So scientists think that while telomerase might have a role in immortalizing cancer cells and allowing them to proliferate out of control, it could also play that same role once controlled on healthy cells and allow our stem cells and our germ cells to be continued much longer than we think. In fact, geneticist Richard Cawthon thinks that by unlocking the key to telomere attrition, we could extend our lifespans by up to 30 years. Now, 30 years is quite a lot, and to go back to what George was saying, this could mean that our 30s could be our new 20s, and that our 20s could be our new teens, could give us unparalleled time to study and get to our careers and move on with our life without sacrificing so much of our life at the beginning. Now, as I said, one of the main problems is figuring out how to activate the long ways without activating cancers and proliferating cells. But with the resolve and rate of current research, the future of aging is as promising as it ever was. Thank you very much.